I'm Carl Schweitzer, an orthopedic surgeon specialized in foot and ankle surgery at Duke Orthopedics, and I practice in Raleigh, North Carolina. Today we're talking about Dynanite compression staples, and this is a product that has truly been a game changer uh, in my practice uh, for the types of patients that I see and treat. We'll go over today the reasons for that, but mostly the speed and OR efficiency with which it allows you to work, the ease of use, the low profile nature of the product, the ability to gain continuous compression, and the wide range of sizing options that are available that you can use throughout the forefoot, midfoot, and hindfoot. Indications for me include midfoot and hindfoot fusions and osteotomies, Aiken osteotomies in the forefoot, along with metatarsal corrective osteotomies, lapidus arthrodesis, and lesser metatarsal osteotomies, and other types of bunion repairs. So this is how I used to fixate my hindfoot fusions, specifically looking at the talonavicular and CC joints. I had trouble gaining adequate compression and strength of fixation. And this is how I used to fixate midfoot fusions. Obviously, there's a lot of time and exposure involved in placing all of this hardware, and I felt like overall the compression at the end of the case was not that satisfactory to me. So in terms of problems with these prior fixation techniques, it obviously involved a lot of increased surgical time. There was increased surgical exposures, poor fixation, a longer period of immobilization postoperatively for these patients, and I felt that I was seeing some delayed unions and non-unions as a result of my fixation construct. In terms of additional indications and cases, I've used the Dynite compression staples for metatarsal osteotomies. This is a case of a cavus foot deformity in a patient for which we're doing a dorsiflexion first metatarsal osteotomy. This is a case of a patient who came to me with a failed midfoot arthrodesis and non-union for which we did a revision construct. And for me, the Dynite staples are critical here in first achieving your compression. And you can see the placement of the staples were able to gain good spread of the staples, both dorsally and plantarly, and able to achieve good spread across the joints. I typically like to get at least two staples across each joint, depending on which midfoot joint you're, you're looking at. And of course, at the end of the case, we need to stabilize this construct as the patient is neuropathic. So we're using a medial column plate to protect our compression and correction we've achieved with our Dynite staples. This is another case of a revision arthrodesis of a hind foot for a non-union. And here, we're performing a triple arthrodesis and converting this patient from a non-union of their subtalar joints and talonavicular joints and using Dynite compression staples in similar fashion. Here, using them dorsally across the talonavicular joint and then laterally at the CC joint to gain excellent compression for healing. This is a case of an ankle replacement patient, a rheumatoid patient, and here they also have symptomatic arthritis at their talonavicular joint. It's a very easy approach because you're already using an anterior approach for your ankle replacement to extend your incision more distalward so you can approach the talonavicular joint. And this fixation construct is excellent as you achieve great compression across the talonavicular joint with minimal hardware prominence and without the need for an alternative or accessory incision medially. And we're able to achieve good spread of three staples across this joint in order to achieve a solid arthrodesis across the medial, central, and lateral aspects of the talonavicular joint. My post-op protocol for these types of patients with midfoot and hindfoot arthrodesis really depends on the extent of the fusion of which we're looking to achieve, along with the presence of any type of neuropathy that the patient may have. Typically, for a standard midfoot arthrodesis, we'll keep them non-weight-bearing for a period of four to six weeks, as I feel our compression is very reliable and our healing seems to occur earlier on in the post-op recovery. Typically, it'll be a splint out of the operating room, followed by one short leg cast. For hindfoot arthrodesis, sometimes we'll extend the period of non-weight-bearing for a total of eight to 12 weeks postoperatively. For me, the Dynanite compression staples have been a game changer for my practice. The operative efficiency has been key as well. The amount of time I save in the operating room by reduction in time that I typically would spend placing hardware has been significant as the Dynanite compression staples have a very simple application and ease of use. I know that my patients in my practice have benefited greatly from this technology, and it's been a true game changer in my practice. Thank you.